Hi everyone, my name is Ali Mehran. Um, I'm fourth year PhD, and my advisor is Dr. Amir Al Kuchak. Um, I'm working in CHRS lab in UC Irvine. Today I'm going to speak about water resources, system vulnerability assessment, accounting, human influence. So before going through the slides, I just wanted to show these couple of figures here, which are both for Lake Orville in Northern California in 2009. So the left one is showing January 2009, while the other one is in August. So as you can see, in just like 10 months, it is no more good for recreational purposes because of scarcity of water. So the topic we chose here, the vulnerability of water resources, it has some key points in it. The first, which shows the motivation of this work, is all about reservoirs. First of all, we, we all know that reservoirs are providing resilience against extremes and they're playing a key role in water resources management. And on the other hand, vulnerability is categorized as a performance index. The point about performance indices is that they capture the interplay of climate variability and they capture human influence over reservoirs. Then about performance indices, we know that uh, there are classical methods which have been developing for the whole time, but one of the very first one was done in 1982 by Hashimoto et al. So he defined reliability as the probability of a satisfactory state uh, in the whole states and then resilience is the same having this probability in it which is probability of two consecutive events which first is a failure but the second one is a satisfactory one and vulnerability itself is not only the probability of uh, this satisfactory state but also the severity of failure at time t. So totally for uh, these vulnerability studies, we have two basic methodologies. The first one is top-down top methodology and the other one is bottom-up. In top-down methodology, we are more focused on factors like climate change, which are on top and we cannot make any changes to them. While in bottom-up methodology, we are considering some factors in the bottom, like water demand, like regulations, water policies. So this way we are trying to integrate these two methodologies and create one new hybrid index to assess vulnerability of water reservoirs. About human influence on hydrological cycle, I just wanted to show what happens when we are constructing one dam, like in Lake Shasta since 1995 to 2014. Inflow to reservoir is like this blue solid line, while if we consider the reservoir, the outflow is right there. So we can see the shift of peaks here and also the shift in three months later. So this way, human is influencing the hydrological cycle in all the reservoir areas. So. One of the key factors in defining this new hybrid index is the type of the reservoir system. Basically, we have two types of reservoir system. The first one is within-year system, and the other one is over-year. In the within-year system, reservoir is to be filled less than 12 months. Let's say seasonal effects can affect the, uh, the reservoir totally. But the over-year one is filled more than 12 months over a year. So for that reason, we are just considering two time frames in months, which is defined as M. So M is either 6 or 12, based on the type of the reservoir system. So we start uh, defining two new indicators, like inflow demand reliability indicator and water storage resilience indicator and then we convert them into an index, and then at the end, we use these em empirical uh, 
probability to derive the multivariate standardized reliability and resilience index. So this way I wanted to highlight these uh, basic methodologies in um, introducing the performance indices. So bottom-up methodology is in the right branch and the top-down is on the left. So in the bottom-up, as you can see, the key factor is like monthly water storage, but in top-down, it is all about total inflow to reservoir. So we defined the inflow demand reliability indicator as alpha and water storage resilience indicator as beta. They are both dependent on expected uh, water demand during the projected time frame as M we defined the, in the earlier slides. So here I, I plotted both of them, both of the indicators uh, against each other uh, and the case study was Melbourne's major reservoirs. So as you can see, if we want to study any of them one by one, their intensity and their trend is totally different. So that's why we are to define this new hybrid index. And in this equation, QN is the monthly inflow, Q expected is the total expected water demand, and we have the monthly storage and I as an index of month, and T is uh, for the months we are defining alpha and beta as the indicator. So, for instance, here, if we want to calculate both of the indicators for month December, we should consider the total inflow during the last M 12 months, and then for the next 12 months estimated total water demand, we're gonna calculate both alpha and beta indicators on the same month, and the results will be the same as I showed. Then I wanted to compare and see what would come out of this methodology if I use this multivariate uh, approach. So as you can see, we have three solid lines here the green one is the standardized inflow demand reliability index, and the red one is the standardized water storage index. As you can see here, in 1988, the green line, which is, which is the, uh, coming from the top-down methodology, is showing that we have water scarcity, while the other one is showing that in 2008, the scarcity is over, which is not correct. None of them are showing the reality because we had this millennium drought over Melbourne. Then when we use this multivariate approach, we can see that it is covering the whole period except one year here in the middle. And then as I want to compare it with other findings about millennium drought over Melbourne, I compared it with Dr. Howe's results in 2014, which is based on SPI. It is down there, I don't know why it is not showing up. So, and the same thing happens here. His results is in good agreement with what we found over Melbourne. So it, uh, it, it somehow uh, is, is in agreement with our results and it shows that with this new index, with this new hybrid index, we could cover the both type of methodologies. So one step further, I, I did the same thing for Lake Shasta in California. So we can see back in 2006, we had enough water to uh, supply demand, but in 2007 and 2008, it is not like that. We have terrible water scarcity. And these two years are in good agreement with uh, observations from California's water district. And the same thing happens for Lake Orville in California. Again, in 2007 up to 2009, we have this water scarcity. But again, here in 2011, we have enough water in the reservoir. So in all the plots, if you notice, one of these uh, indexes is showing the onset, while the other one is showing the persistence or building storage towards the time as time goes by. So again, here for Lake Trinity, we have this water scarcity in 1991, but in 1994, we have enough water. 
So again, it starts with this uh, water storage index and it ends up with the green one. So as a conclusion for this work, I would say this classical methods, uh, they're covering the climate variability and human influence as said, like top-down methodology and bottom-up methodology. Here we are introducing this hybrid index, which is integrating the different drivers of water storage vulnerability. And with this index, we can investigate the adaptive capacity of the reservoir. And also by application of this proposed index, we can buffer the vulnerable condition, distinguish the early onset of vulnerability and recognize the main driver of the scarcity condition. And thank you. Questions for Ali? Yes, Yushi. Uh, excuse me, could you There is a mic over there, or we can come closer. So uh, many reservoirs has multiple purposes, including water supply and hydropower, flood control, navigation. How does it work? Your system integrated approach for those reservoirs? Uh, well, the, uh, this index is more focused exactly on the reservoir. So whatever you have as the inflow and expected outflow, you have some estimation of your outflow or let's say demand, whatever it can be for hydropower or for providing water for the city. We have some estimates of that for the next time frame. That's why we are introducing this index. We, we are expecting something. We are estimating some demand for the future. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Last quick question. Very interesting work, Ali. I'm just uh, wondering, uh, many times, actually, as you mentioned, the reservoirs are multi-purpose, right? So, so sometimes, actually, when you have a f you know, flash inflow into your reservoir and your reservoir is full, so operator is uh, basically deciding instantly how much the flow might go out. And that might be actually be very different from the expected outflow that you basically try to schedule based on the previous inflows to the system. So how your index can see that and how much would you think that those events might actually come into a kind of uh, propagate into uncertainty of your index measures that you are trying to propose? Well, uh, so in this approach, as we're using the standardized index and we, we rank all the events, always it is compared to the previous events that we had in the timeline of this reservoir, of this special reservoirs. So you're correct about uh, water demand and we estimate something based on, on the past. But uh, when we have this flash flood, for sure we have this inflow and we are expecting something for the future and months, right? So based on that, we can decide about the operation of the reservoir in that special period. 